Welcome back to another video on M2 mechanics. So today we're looking at using differentiation and this is within the variable acceleration uh, topic. So what we're going to look at here is a few things. Now before I jump into that let's just remind ourselves on the general lettering that we use. So V for velocity, obviously U and V for initial and final. Uh, S for displacement. And obviously T for time. Now, in terms of velocity, velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Anything that's a rate of change is something that's differentiated with respect to time. So velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So it's ds by dt. Okay, so any kind of rate of change is you're differentiating with respect to time. Now that means that we can also express acceleration as a rate of change of velocity. So that would be dv by dt. And again, that could then also be the second derivative of it, so of uh, ds by dt. Because, well, we know that v is ds by dt, so if we differentiated this, dv by dt, we're thinking of differentiating that, essentially, it would be the same as then getting out d2s by dt squared. We're differentiating that one. Hopefully that kind of makes some sense. Now these are the things that we're going to use within our questions. So look at the kind of things that we looked at in the last video but this time now it's just going to be purely algebraic. We're going to be looking at just using differentiation to help us solve these problems. As always it's probably much easier to talk about this within some examples so let's get into the first one. Okay, so here we've got our first example, and it looks very similar to the ones in the last videos. But obviously in this one we're starting with this displacement. So if you read through the question, it's move, particles moving along the x-axis, same as before. Time t seconds here, and then the displacement of x meters from the origin. And this is quite common in questions, instead of using s, because we're only moving in the x direction, then they're using x to form that displacement rather than the s. So, you know, it's in this first example, it is something that is quite common. So here we have it, x is t cubed minus 8t plus 16. Now, looking at the first part, we need to find the velocity when t equals 3. So we got our displacement x equals t cubed minus 8t plus 16. And then the velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So it means I need to differentiate this. And of course that is the velocity. So 3t squared minus 8. Now I need to substitute my value of t in. So when t is 3, my velocity is 3 lots of 3 squared minus 8. So 3 squared 9, 27 minus 8, 19 meters per second there. Now part B, we want to find the value of t for which p is instantaneously at rest. So that means when v equals 0. So when v equals 0, 3t squared minus 8 must be 0. So 3t squared equals 8. t squared is 8 over 3. So t is plus or minus the square root of 8 over 3. And this could be 1.63 to 3 significant figures here. Okay, obviously we need that positive value. Um, 
it would be perfectly acceptable to leave it as a square root. Just make sure you are using your positive answer. I would often, you know, put the, the plus and minus down and then at the final part then put my, my answer with the correct sign. Now finally, part C, we want to find the acceleration of P. Sorry, just making a little bit more space. So the acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. So it's dv by dt. So that means that we are going to be differentiating our velocity, which we found here. Okay. Um, again, it's just like differentiating this one twice. So that 3t squared will become 6t, and obviously the minus 8 will become nothing. So that's all we're looking at here. t equals 2. So our acceleration is 6 times 2, which is 12 meters per second squared. And that is all there is to it. Nice, straightforward, easy example to get us into this. Let's look at another one. So here we have another former past, oh, past paper question, former question. A runner takes part in a race and it's a 200 meter sprint, but it's uh, in a straight line so that we can model this properly. Um, at a time t seconds after starting, her displacement s from the starting position is modeled as so. Given that the runner completes the race in 25 seconds, first find the values of k and t. So the first thing you need to remember is, well, it's a 200 meter race and it took her 25 seconds. So we know this information straight away. So we've got S equals K root T. And if I substitute these in, we get 200 K times the root of 25. So obviously that's 5 K equals 200. Therefore, k is going to be 40. So our new formula is s equals 40 root t. Yeah. Also, we know that the time taken is 25 seconds. So, you know, also, rather than therefore, I should say, really, also t equals 25. This is between 0 and 25 quite clearly, isn't it? And then let's look at part b. Find the speed of the runner when she crosses the finish line. So speed is going to be our velocity, which is the rate in change of displacement. So velocity is the s by dt. Now think about what we had. Let me actually start up here. So s is 40t to the power of half. And v is the s by dt, which is a half times 40t to the minus a half. Or 20 over the square root of t. That is our velocity, or formula for velocity now, as we've got from here. And obviously t would be 25, as that's the time where she crosses the finish line. So v is 20 over root 25, which is 20 over 5, so 4 meters per second. Now, for part C, we need to criticize this for small values of t. Well, let's look at this velocity. This velocity we've discovered is 20 over root t. Now, if that bottom part of the fraction is very small, then that's going to make that overall fraction very large. So <clears throat> what I would say here is just substitute the value in. So you think straight after starting, um, you know, say, let's say we're half a second in. 
So you're thinking right now, let's think where t is half a second. Yeah? And our velocity is 20 over the square root of a half. 20 over square root of 0.5. Now that's suddenly that's 28 meters per second. I suppose that's not too bad. I don't know. Is that far as fast as someone can run? Just checked it out, and that is only slightly slower than a cheetah. So get an unlikely speed there, cheetah, roughly 29 meters per second. Let's change it to an even smaller value then. So t equals 0 0.1, straight off to start in. So the velocity is 20 over the square root of 0 0.1. 20 over the square root of 0 0.1. That's going to be 63 meters per second, which is like twice as fast or more than twice as fast as a, as a cheetah. That 0 0.5 we put in is roughly the same speed as a cheetah. So we're already looking at some ridiculous speeds. And if we made that time even smaller, you know that speed would be even greater. So here, all we want to be saying is, you know, and I would definitely show an example to illustrate my point, but small values of T mean that V is far too large. Okay, so small T V is much too large and let's illustrate it with an example now just before we get into some more questions if you are new to the channel or long time viewer please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already it does really help me out also if you've been watching my videos for a while and you feel like help me out a little bit further then please consider hitting the super thanks button somewhere down the bottom of the screen video. It would, of course, really be appreciated. Anyway, let's get on to some more questions. The next set, I've got five past paper questions for you to try. And as always, I'll put the answers at the end of the video.